Hello, welcome to our All Levels 60 Minute class for the week. This week's pose focus is Jatara Parivartanasana, often called firmly rotated pose. This is a core focused practice. Take a comfortable seat, nice and tall through the spine. Breath in, breath out. Turn the gaze low or maybe even close the eyes. Continue that focus to your breath. This month, much of what we will come to you will have a core centric focus, whether it's the pose itself or simply how we are approaching the pose. And that starts here with the breath. Big breath in, breath out. And then it can start to be more subtle. I ask you to watch how that will ebb and flow throughout the practice today. At times easier, at times harder, at times more focused, at times less focused. Okay, good. Before we get into movement, I'm sharing these opening words around gratitude at the beginning of each practice all month. Gratitude from Morgan Harper Nichols. Stay with your breath as you take in these words. I hope you do not feel like you shouldn't be able to talk about how difficult it is to wait and trust in the process. Please do not let anyone make you feel like you are automatically ungrateful just because you are struggling to see where the light pours in. Yes, a daily practice of gratitude is incredibly valuable to your well-being, but it does not mean that you have to pretend you are immune to the strong emotions that come with waiting. Learning to trust in the process is about learning to trust that there is so much happening beneath the surface, beneath the layers of worries, doubts, and long list of things you have not figured out. There is endless, boundless grace that gives you room to feel what you need to feel, while also moving forward one step at a time. Let this be what you're grateful for, the opportunity to keep going, to keep trying, to keep waking up each morning knowing that even if you didn't have the best start or even if the failures of yesterday still seem to haunt you, you are free to try again. You are free to trust and embrace the process of learning every lesson you need to learn that you know is only going to prepare you for whatever lies ahead. I take in a little something new, a little something reiterated each time I read through gratitude. Two paragraphs from Morgan Harper Nichols. I hope it sinks into your bones throughout this month in a way that brings opportunity to this practice. Okay, gently open the eyes. Give your whole body a little bit of a shake. Forgot to mention before we started, if you have a yoga strap or something that substitutes as it, as it and two blocks, I think they'll come in handy in today's practice. Stand up. 
the first thing we do is grab the yoga strap or maybe it's a belt maybe it's a towel maybe a scarf anything long will work stand with your feet maybe outer hip distance apart arms nice big and wide and just go up and back a few times it can be quick even have a little bit of uh, leeway in the strap doesn't have to be ultra tight just see where that starting point is yeah all right and then wherever you were bring it in tighter so that now it's harder ready let's see what happens slower now and as you move along the back i want you to reach a spot where it feels creaky and hard and stiff Stay with it, stay with it, stay with it, and then go all the way down, okay? Once you're all the way down, lift up to your toes. Do this one as fast as you can. Ready? Up and over. For whatever reason, that toe lift heels higher, makes things easier. Okay, again, can you bring your hand in a little bit tighter? and go up slow 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 pause along that sticky part oh my goodness that's so sticky right there <sighs> lift your chest give it a couple more breaths right i'm turning around just to show you the different angles you don't have to but you certainly could walk a bit okay we ready let's take it down to the waist i made it did you guys Okay, and then again, releve, and this one's going to go quick, up and down. Okay, what do you think? You got one more? Stay at the same place. If that was a 12 on a 1 to 10 score, uh, scale, go bigger so that it's a little more easeful. If that was a five pretty doable go shorter again okay we're looking for arms both as straight as possible but with a little bend in the elbows and let's do it up slow 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 sticky part sticky part find it stay with it do you need a little more bend in both elbows maybe maybe not stay with it ready Let's take it down to the waist. Oh. Okay. Ready? Up and over. Can go quick. Two different feelings. Done. Belt off to the side. Come to the top end of your sticky mat. All right. I love doing that rotation with the yoga strap each and every day if it comes to mind for you or maybe it's something you put on your daily uh, to-do chart of good self-care and wellness but i wanted to do it particularly in this class because getting a little bit more of that range and openness for shoulders and upper body helps us to lengthen out through the sides of the torso and we want to, that to come in good and handy for our core work today. Stand at the top of your mountain, mountain pose knowing I've already done good stuff. A fullness, a gratitude, the opportunity to move, to be in this practice to do good for yourself. Inhale, lift the arms up to the sky. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Step back to plank. Lower down to your mat. Cobra. Downward facing dog. Breathe here. Look to your hands. Get light up onto the toes. 
Ready, step, jump, or walk, feet to your hands. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Stand up, arms to the sky. Palms together, center of the chest. Do it all over again. Inhale, lift the arms. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Plank, Chaturanga, Cobra, Down Dog. So engage from core, nice strength to bring you forward, whether that's the step or the jump. Think belly lifted to move forward, hips higher to come forward. Then inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Stand, reach the arms up to the sky. Palms together, center of your chest. One more time, inhale, lift up. Exhale, fold. Half lift. Step, even jump back and down, chaturanga, cobra. Pelvis down, but belly up, down dog. Breathe here. Okay, listen, feet as wide as your yoga mat. Lift up to your toes, heels in the air. Bend your knees. Look at your toes, look at your heels, and kind of bounce, pulse in the legs. Now imagine your butt going up towards the sky and up shoulders a little forward over your wrist. Butt up, shoulders forward, ready? Take a little jump. Take two more like that. Bunny hops, up. One more. Hop. Now, hop forward, keeping that same sort of momentum. It's different, but similar. Inhale, half lift, fold. Stand up, arms to the sky, palms together, center of the chest. Again, inhale, lift the arms. Exhale, forward fold. Now keep the right foot forward, step your left foot back into a low lunge. And pulse your legs a little forward and back, meaning Two or towards straight on the right leg, and then back into a bend. Don't so much worry about uh, alignment or where things are. Just get some movement there. Maybe you want to like shift a little side to side, whatever feels nice, okay? Work it in there. And then stay knee over the line of the ankle as much as we can. And then this is a funny thing, but I'm trying to get my palms flat on the ground. It's kind of hard for me to get there, like all the way flat. But if I lift the back leg a little bit higher, strengthen out, and actually give myself a little bit more space to lengthen and stretch out through the spine, I can get the hands down more evenly and flatly on each side of your foot, try it. Hands flat down with the back leg a little higher than you thought to. Now keep the legs as they are and lift the torso straight up and down, arms overhead. Can you move your right knee an inch more forward and your back heel an inch more back? whole body sits down maybe two inches lower, an inch from each of the movements. Squeeze the back glute. Just remember to do it myself. Fire up there, stay with this high lunge. And then drop the hands back down. Can they go flat down? Plank. To the mat. Hands back behind you, palms up, locust, lift. Chaturanga. 
child's pose, push back. Knees a bit apart, big toes together, child's pose. Walk both hands over to the right. Always looking to stretch the lats, open up for some space. Walk the hands over to the left. Come back to the middle, come up to all fours. Do cat and cow. And downward facing dog. Okay, feet wide again. Lift the heels up, bend the knees. Look at your toes, look at your heels, bend and straighten the legs a little bit. So we're gonna call this one first stage. We did it before, remember? And then second stage was taking the hops. And you gotta think shoulders forward as the butt goes up. Try three hops. Give it a little bounce in between each time. Shoulders forward as your butt goes high. And then all the way forward in between those hands. Half lift, fold, stand up, arms to the sky, palms to the center. Okay, inhale, lift up. Exhale, forward fold. Left foot stays forward, right foot back. Again, just kind of move around here, a little bit forward and back, straighten and bend. Maybe a little wiggle side to side, whatever feels good. All right, I noticed I already have a little bit more space. I feel like I could almost get my palms down because this is the second side, legs are starting to warm up. But still, take your left foot just slightly more out to the side than you might think to giving your belly a little bit more space to breathe there. And then the back leg like a little bit higher than you first thought to, get it stronger and steadier there. And then, I mean, it's anatomy too. It's just like limb length sometimes doesn't allow it. But see what happens. Can you place your palms flat down or as flat as possible? Stand and look a little forward. Whoo. Okay, keeping all of that, come upright in the torso, more vertical, arms to the sky, palms turn in. Push the left knee more forward, right heel more back. It's that rubber band stretching out a little bit more, feeling a little more taut, Sit the hips down a tiny bit lower. Don't overstretch, you never wanna break the band. All right, lower the hands down, plank, step it back through, lower down. Hands behind you, interlace the palms. Oh, Lucas, lift up. Squeeze the butt. Squeeze the back, lower down, press back, child's pose. Okay, we'll change to standing. So you can just tuck the toes, kind of at the back of your mat, make your way up to standing. Summit pose is like mountain pose, but interlace the hands, flip the palms and reach through your thumb and first finger. So in the yoga hour practice, this one's usually called summit. Top of the mountain, you have made it. <sighs> Navel towards the spine, I think tailbone down, firm in the legs, a lift through the chest here. 
Okay, release the arms down by your side. Amazing how much heat that brings in, right? Now, big step forward to our lunge. Step the right foot up. We know high lunge as well. We've been here today. We've been here many times before. Arms up. Okay, add the twist. Left elbow to the outside of the knee. But bring your belly way down. Then scooch, scooch over into it. That might get you a little firmer hold. And when we work firmly rotated pose, we need the broadness of twist, tone, and turn through the abdomen. So we use the legs, belly working kind of against each other in a way here in this twisted lunge that will benefit us as we move along later. The twist is the thing. Whew, so then just kind of let yourself come out of that twist. Let's place the back heel down to the mat. Okay, two options. Hands stay to the inside of the foot, giving yourself just a little bit uh, you know, you've got four limbs down on the ground to catch hold here. Or we're going into no-handed lunge. For no-handed lunge, we're going to go lower, lower, lower in the upper body. As you do that, just like we did a moment before, locusts with hands bound behind your back. And this time, stretch the arms up towards the sky. Now, don't let your butt go way out to the side like I'm doing right now. Think of it more pointed back towards your right heel. I'm sorry, towards your left heel. It should be your back heel, keeping right shoulder, right knee against each other. And then again, release the hands. Step it back, plank. Lower down to the mat. We're going for cobra in between here. And downward facing dog. Guess what? A couple more of those jumps. So you are either bending and straightening your legs and staying within that play, or you're doing the bend and the straight, and next bend, taking the hop. Maybe even try to get a little tiny bit of air time where you feel like you're in balance but closer in line with shoulders and wrist. Whoo! And then walk the hands now backwards to your feet and come up to standing. It's intense. Working the connection of breath, rectus abdominis here in the front. Second side, left foot forward, big giant step. It's a high lunge. Take your step, maybe it's a couple of steps, work your way there. Square off the hips, take the arms up. All right, so if I just take the hands and try to go from here and twist without a lot of thought, I won't get very deep. But if instead I take the hinge first, might even be butt a little bit higher up and back and try to press down most of the belly to the inside of the thigh, then I've got more length and I'm gonna use that length to help get more into the twist. And it's like push and pull, push and pull. The leg is strong and steady, upper body working around it. Right shoulder as much as you can to the outside of the thigh. Nice strong tone and turn in the abdomen. You're with it for another breath. There should be quite a release to let it out. Whew, both hands to the inside, spin the back heel down. 
Okay, so one way to get the butt to go more back rather than out is simply turn the back toes more forward and then the whole body, it's easier to focus and face towards the front short side, yeah? So that, that left hip is tucked with more stability back. So you're either staying here, limbs on the ground, or try that no-handed lunge again. It's take hands behind your back. Second favorite finger in front. Can you interlace the other finger? Okay, and then try the lift. Head down, arms up. Oh, left sit bone towards the right heel. So much to ask. And release. We're working our way into plank. Lower down, chaturanga, into cobra. Down dog. Guess what? Last round for our pulses or our hops. So here we are with feet wide, either bend and straighten. It's like we've done a lot of squats already in those legs through this Angle, you keep doing that. Or can you do one, two, or three more of the hops? Give it a go. One, maybe two, maybe three. Walk the hands backwards. So then you gotta get lighter after all of that heaviness. Change up the agility and ability. And roll it up to standing this time. It's a lot of work. Nice job. Okay, moving along. Let's switch things up. Pick up your blocks if you're using them. If not, no big worry. I'm using them almost more like a weight than as a um, help here. And I've got two odd blocks, whatever. A heavy hand and a light hand, we do what we can. Use what you got, right? So feet wide, and then turn your right toes out. Look out over that right hand. Okay, I'm keeping this back arm weighted just because I don't want you to drop down and when you're having to hold on to something, you're usually more likely to give it deeper awareness and keep it lifted, hand as high as the shoulder. And then bend the right knee, hand as high as the shoulder still. You keep that line as you switch into half moon pose. And then it's easier to reach the ground because you've got a block underneath the bottom hand. Now that top hand wants to like fall down and get heavy. Keep it straight up to the sky. Can you now bend the left elbow, drop the block towards your right hip and try to make your left toes touch the block. Bend and straighten the leg. I'm not saying they will, but I want to give you a nice idea of where I want you to bend and straighten. High ability, come in to check it out. Bend and straighten, do it three times. And then take the left block back up into the air. Feeling pretty heavy. Go to warrior two, back foot down. Whew, threw me off, warrior two. Okay, now the left arm goes down again behind the left thigh and lift the right arm and right block up. Hold it. Little play here. Can you pat yourself on the back with the right block? Can you bring your left block up? Ah, oh, they're touching. My fingers usually can't touch like this, but the blocks can. And then straighten it back out again. Warrior two. Straighten the right leg. All right, give yourself a break as needed. I'm gonna see what happens if I just keep them up the whole time. Switch your feet. 
Back toes in, left toes all the way out. Okay, bend the left knee. Bodhi, it's not playtime. We're headed to half moon pose. Left block goes down, right block up to the sky, staying in that same line as the shoulder. Not out to the side, not forward or back, trying straight up. Keep it there. Now can you bend the right elbow and tuck the block kind of behind you on the left side? And then bend the right knee to try to make the toes touch the block. <laughs> They're nowhere close for me, but I know where I'm supposed to go. Right toes curl in to try to touch the block and then straighten the leg, do it three times. Curl it in and straighten. Okay, right hand goes back up to the sky. Warrior two. Why are we doing all of this, you might ask? Because the different weight in your hands is making you find balance and more stability in the core that you're not used to. Left arm up, right arm down. Pat yourself on the back with the top block. And maybe the bottom block can come up. Give it a little kiss. Extend it back out, warrior two. Okay, straighten the left leg, turn the toes. We'll bring the legs back together, set your blocks down. Fun? <laughs> Shake it out. If you didn't have blocks handy, but want to try it again later, you can grab literally anything um, that you can maintain some balance with as you go into half moon and back up. Okay, let's regroup together at the top end of our yoga mat. Lift both arms up to the sky. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Step back to plank. Lower flat down to your mat. Cobra, we've been here plenty now. And downward facing dog. Right leg up and back. Lift the right leg, three legged dog. Open the leg, open the hip, and let the leg go as high as possible. You kind of turn the torso a little bit to the side so that you can pretty easily see underneath that right armpit. Okay, cool. Notice that opening. We're going to close it off a little bit. Bring the left shoulder up more in line with the right, which should turn your focus more down towards the yoga mat. Let's go of some of that twist in the torso. Now square off the hips as well, which is probably going to lower the right leg. Let it lower until the hips are as square as you can possibly feel them in space in your body and stick with it right there. And then slowly lift the leg and open up again through the hip and let yourself peek underneath the right armpit again. Subtle shifts, square off the shoulders again and then square off the hips again. Pull the right knee up and into the chest. You might be thinking, is this core? Is this just all shoulders? It's a lot of both, right? Step the right foot all the way through into that low lunge. Triangle pose. Move the right hand to the inside of your foot. Spin the back heel down. Today, in this triangle pose, first two fingers and thumb, grab around your big toe. Give it a hug. Now, left hand to your waist. Okay, friends, make your right leg as straight as it'll go, keeping that big toe hold, which may or may not be straight. 
but keep the big toe hold. If you've got it, ready for a little bit more instruction, try turning the left hip more up towards the sky. It's actually done through more external rotation in the right bottom hip, if you will, right now. Even look up, take the left arm high. Imagine that you still had that block in your hand and you really had to balance and stabilize straight up. Okay, walk your way out of it. Step forward. We're going triangle first on the second size. I want to give you a little bit more time before you have to repeat all of that three-legged dog work. So triangle pose first on the second side. Left foot forward, right foot back. And spin the back heel down. First two fingers and thumb, big toe of the left foot. This is a different triangle pose. We're not trying to make this look like every other triangle that you do in a typical class. This is different. Okay, concentrate on holding on to that big toe. All your energy and focus right there. And then, nice breath. Make the left leg straighter, straighter, straighter. Maybe towards straight. Definitely doesn't have to go straight. Keep the hold of the big toe. Now, change your focus. Right hip, your top hip. Can you get that anterior hip point, the bony part of your hip, to stick more out or more up? How are you going to do that? It's a rotation through the bottom leg. So I'm going to breathe and slowly rotate from the bottom leg to help that right hip open up, open up, open up. It's all the way through the spine, the rotation of the spine, right hand high. Similar rotation to what you're going to need in firmly rotated pose. Jatara Paritvaratanasana soon. Let go. Come back to your low lunge. Step it back. Downward facing dog. Okay. We got to go three-legged dog work on the second side. If you need to come down for your knees for a minute, just give it a couple breaths, a little bit of time. Cool. When you're ready, join me. Left leg up, three-legged dog. All right, so here we go, friends. Give it as much height as possible and let yourself open. Let the hips rotate open towards the side. Look underneath that left armpit. Right shoulder's going to dip down a little bit. Let it all happen. Feel the freedom and the lift. Okay, and then it's Subtle, maybe not so subtle, really. Turn of the torso to get the shoulders square again. I'm doing tons of work to get that right shoulder up, to rotate the um, abdomen back around. Strong squeeze at the tips of the shoulder blades and then get the leg and the hips involved as well. Lower the left leg's height so it's easier to get the hips square. And then we're not done. We're going to go back into that, I'm going to call freedom and lift position. What I hope that we tend to find here is that there can be enough freedom within a stronger boundary as you then again turn back. Right shoulder as high as the left. I feel so balanced that I have that freedom to play more in the hips, square off the hips. Stay, stay, stay. And regular plank pose, both legs go down, child's pose. Knees apart, push back. Good work, breathe here. Okay, come stand up on your mat. A little standing balance work before we get down low onto the mat.
partly I like the standing balance work here because then I think everything comes easier once I get down onto the mat. I'm like, well, at least I'm not having to balance on one leg anymore. All right, I'm gonna give you two options here. The first, no props. Because I often practice no props, I think that way is actually more doable. But it's because I'm, it's what I'm used to. So a prop can make things harder or it can make things easier. Because now I'm moving the balance in a different way than when I'm used to holding the leg. I find this one harder, but if I couldn't reach the foot to begin with for the balance, then this creates a more doable option. You're gonna hold either onto your foot or use a strap on the bottom of the foot and hold onto the strap to get your right leg to go straight out in front of you. Once the leg is straight out in front of you, try taking it out to the side. Hold your balance, hold your pose, keep the breath going. Bring it back to the front and then down. So again, strap closes off that connection between where your hand can reach and the foot making the pose perhaps more doable. There's more shakiness in how to balance because it's not directly placed hand to foot. So maybe you go hand to foot, whether the leg goes all the way straight or not. Try the second side. Leg straight and then out to the side. What do you like? Try both. There's a concentration in the breath that keeps me strong in the core. It's not like tighten all the muscles, have enough freedom, the concentration. All right. Finish up your second side if you haven't already. And then let's all head back up to the top end of our yoga mat. One round of Surya Namaskar A or Sun Salutation A, and then we'll be heavy on the mat for the rest of practice. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift, step back to plank, lower down, cobra, downward facing dog. Breathe right here and downward facing dog. Look to your hands now, step or jump to the top of the mat. Inhale, half lift. Fold, stand up, arms to the sky. Palms together, center of the chest. Breath in, breath out. I am strong, I am stable. I have gratitude for my strength, for my stability. I am soft, I am flowing. I have gratitude for my softness and my flow. Let those things meld together as you lift the arms back up to the sky. Find a strength, a stability, and a softness and a flow to take you all the way down to a seated position on the mat. You pick how that happens. Take a breath in in that seat and a breath out. Okay, we get into our first iteration of the um, firmly rotated pose. Again, Sanskrit, this is Jatara Parivartanasana. 
I'm actually gonna turn my body around for this first one. It's more just so that uh, if you are visually watching, you get, uh, I think, a good picture here. So I like to use the long length of my mat. I've got my butt on one side, and then I'm gonna lie down so that I can line up my shoulders with the top side of the mat and take your hands out to a T-shape so that I can almost within my wingspan, almost <laughs> reach each side of the mat. Okay, now we bring our knees up to 90 degrees. Instead of straight legs, bend at the knees and have your feet as high as your knees. Using the anchor of your shoulders, hands back of the head, take the legs over to the right side and hover maybe four inches, six inches, a foot off the mat, wherever you need so that they can stay lifted. Anchor down through the arms, shoulders, head, breathe in. <sighs> Pull belly back and into the spine. That little <sighs> helps me. And then back to the center. All right, ready, second side as the legs go to the left. And then back to the center. One more time in the bent knee direction or shape. Go to the right, a little. Helps with the breath. Bring it into the middle and to the second side again, and we are hovering the whole time, not lying the legs down right now. And back to the center. Give your knees a good squeeze and a hug, rock a little bit from side to side. I'm gonna change my angle again, try to give us lots of different options to see what's happening. Hands back out to the T, knees over the line of the hips, heels as high as the uh, knees. And now we're trying to keep that 90 degree angle that we've created, but lower heels down, lower abdom abdominum work and back up. Heel touches down and up. Two more like this, heel touch down and up one more time heel touch down and up good news you get to drop the knees to the right side and all the way down keep it there so this is just slightly different from what we usually do at the end of class let me show you this difference if you want to watch often in a supine twist at the end of class when I'm really cooling down. I've brought the knees higher towards the elbow and there's less abdominal twist. Right now, if it works, I'm asking you to keep the knees at the height of the hips, still in that 90 degree angle. So I have more twist in the abdomen. I'm getting a nice little stretch in the outer hip. Okay, use your core strength, bring the knees across the center, and lie the legs down onto the left side. Again, not hiking the knees up towards the elbow, just straight out to the side, a little more. A twist through the entire torso resulting in a nice stretch through the outer hip as well. Okay, and then bring it back up. So our next shot at this is gonna be with straight legs. And I'm gonna show you the straight leg version and if that doesn't go for you, you go back to the bent knee version. That's the reason we did it first. 
Now instead of my feet headed straight out to the line of the hips, I want to try to catch. It's why we did that uh, triangle pose variation earlier. I want to try to catch my feet into my right hand, but with control. That's the real kicker here. Send both legs over, 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 and it's more of a lifted angle. Try to hover, 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 and then let them go and catch hold outer edge of the foot into your right hand. Bodhi's back again. Big nice twist across the abdomen happening here. Okay, to make this most doable, bend the knees and just take those knees back into the chest. We'll give it a go in a moment with straight legs, but this first time around, legs straight back up, and you're either doing this option or you're going back to the bent knee. Remember, control it as much as you can. Send the feet up towards that left hand. Keep the rest of the body as much in place as possible. They hover, they hover, they hover, and then catch. Can the foot hand catch? Big twist. Feels a lot like that twisted lunge to me, but with maybe a little more breathing room. Okay, and then again for safety and ease, bend the knees and bring them to your chest. So the third and last time around for Jatara Parivartanasana for firmly rotated pose, I want you to pick either the bent knee or the straight leg position. And we're gonna go side to side, side to side without catching hovering the whole time. And that hover should be just enough to give you the momentum to get the legs back up. Um, if you feel as though it's gonna start to pull or stretch out that rubber band a little too tight, go with the bent knee version or let your legs falter all the way down and then do that hug into the chest. Okay, let's see what happens here. Bodhi just wants to play. Take the hands out to your T-shape, legs straight up, and let's go to first side, hover, hover, hover. Remember, you're hovering the whole time, and legs go back up. Okay, second side. And up. S the breath out. And up, last time, and up. Hug the knees into the chest, job well done, everybody. Take the soles of the feet flat down onto your yoga mat. Bridge pose, hips high, interlace the hands underneath. Walk the shoulders in. Back of the head, shoulders, feet down. So good core centric focus, but not in the way that we did even a single crunch today. We'll practice all month long how to enjoy both the strength, stability, and the flow and softness that come in core. Let the hips come down, rest the hands over your belly. Real gratitude for all that we had and the opportunity to try. The opportunity of today. Last little bit here, cross the right ankle over the left thigh, knee points out to the side, pull it in, your figure four shape, and hold on wherever feels good. Switch sides. And 
again, stretch the arms all the way long overhead. And then release, find yourself to your final stillness position, pose of rest, a pose of release. Please take your time now to come back to a seated position. Bring the palms together, thumbs to your sternum and Anjali Mudra. Let's close our time together in the sound of Om. You're welcome to sing along to listen or to tune it out. <laughs> Empty out the breath and take a deep breath in. Ah, oh. Namaste. Thank you for your practice.